This video is going to be a review on how to use the Klein Tools K1412 Dual NM Cable Stripper Cutter. Let me show you what this looks like, full view. I'll take this out of the package in a minute and show you how to use this and what all these slots and holes are for. But what is this tool? This tool is used to strip and cut Romex wire. Now Romex wire is the newer wire that is used in mostly residential, might be in commercial, but residential housing for wiring. Many, many decades ago, and they still use it, but many decades ago they used to do uh, metal conduit and inside the conduit they would put wire inside there and it cost a lot of money and took a lot of time to route conduit and they still do it, but uh, a lot of the times now for convenience and cost and time savings, they use Romex. This is Romex wire. The white wire is 14 gauge. Inside here, it's called 14-2. Inside here we have two wires. Okay, and one of the wires is hiding right now. We have a black wire and a white wire. 14 gauge, and then we have a ground wire which is inside there, which is the bare wire. The yellow wire that I have here is 12-2. Now inside here we have a white wire and a black wire and somewhere in here, there it is, you can see somewhere in there we've got the ground that's hidden on the other side. So if you look on the wire it will say 12-2 or 14-2 and sometimes Depending on your wiring needs, you might need three wires. You might need more than just the black and the white if you're doing a three-way switch or some other type of wiring. So you would have 12-3 or 14-3. And that would just be three wires plus your ground. Before I show you how to use this tool, this tool is about $25, $22, something like that. Before I show you how to do that, I want to show you what, why you want to use this tool and how it is normally done for somebody that doesn't do this type of work that often and they don't want to spend a lot of money so they just grab a set of wire cutters so let's grab a set of wire cutters over here and I'm trying to figure out where that ground wire is can't really find it it's uh I don't have heavy duty wire cutters I should be using really big wire cutters because this is a good way to ruin these these are a little better these are still not made for this type of wire but um, that's what I've got right now so see if it cuts. Whoa! And when a wire flies like that, you know that you've got the wrong size cutter. So I'm going with overkill right now. We've got some really heavy duty wire cutters. And now you're starting to see why maybe getting something like this makes sense if you think that you might be doing some wire cutting with Romex. I never bought these. I've done a few jobs right now and every time I say I'm going to buy it, this time I bought it to avoid these problems. So this is overkill, but you can see you need a heavy duty set of wire cutters to even be able to cut wire without having it fly across the room or worrying about injuring yourself or popping your eye out when it goes flying. These are heavy duty. These are expensive, but you cannot use, you can, but you shouldn't be using cheap things like this. It's dangerous. So I'm going to cut the end of my wire. And I'm using a lot of force on here. And these are made to cut very heavy cable. So after you would get the end cut off, now you would have to strip it. Normally, you would want to strip your wire back at least uh, maybe six to eight inches. It just depends on who you are and the way you want to do it. And so what would you do? You could go to the store and you could buy a Romex stripper, which will go in there and grab this wire and put a slice down there. Or you go in here with some cutters and you start playing this ridiculous game of cutting the jacket. You can, maybe you're starting to see why getting the tool makes a lot of sense. So now you cut the jacket, it looks terrible. Let me zoom in a little bit if I can. You have the jacket cut, it looks really bad. Now you have to get your cutters. You 
gonna have to cut the jacket off. Now you've got this brick, this cloth that you have to cut off. Imagine doing this more than uh, a few times to do a, a really small wiring job. Then you've got to go here and cut off the paper. You know, if you know about this and you don't want to watch all of this and just fast forward ahead if you want to. But a lot of people don't know why you would want to get the proper tool and that's the point of this video. Okay, so now we've got the black wire, the white wire, and the brown wire. And I saw it before. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, it's not nicked. Now if you've got strippers that will work on this gauge wire, good for you. If you have a stripper, this is the 14 gauge. If you have a stripper, great. If you don't, now you've got to play this game again. And if you're good at this, you know, you can do a light uh, spinning and maybe see I'm already pulling the wire. You see how much trouble this is? Or the other way that people will do it is they'll go around here and they'll nick the edge. And then that worked. I'm going to put my finger in there. It didn't damage the wire that much, but you don't want to really nick these wires because they're carrying some heavy-duty current usually. So that's just for one wire. Now let's go over here. Let's try to do this a little better. I'm going to cut in a little bit, but I know by doing that, I know that I'm going to damage the, the wire. I might nick it just a little bit. All that trouble just to get this. And if this is hanging out of a box, out of a junction box, then it's very inconvenient if you're on a ladder. The wires are pulling back and forth. They're not even anymore. It's, it just takes a lot of time. Then, oh boy, then you got to have uh, needle nose. Let's get those. If we use the big cutters, then we use the small cutters. Now we're going to go with the needle nose so that we can, if, you, if you're going into a wire nut, you won't have to do this, but if you're going around a screw of a, a switch or a power outlet, you get your ne needle nose and you go and bend the wire. I've already messed that up. But you go and you bend the wire and you get yourself a little hook over there. Okay, so that's one wire out of this, out of three. Then you have to go to the other side and you got to screw with that again. Now let's try this on the 12 gauge. 12 gauge, I already cut off the end. This is even harder to do. Jacket is a little more forgiving. It's, it flops around a little more, but you got to play this game again. Of going in here, and some people might use an exacto knife, or who knows what they're going to use. But jacket's heavy. You got to go pull this thing back. You got to go all the way back. And while you're doing this, if you're not careful, if you haven't done this before, there's a good chance that you're going to put a little nick on the black or white insulation. So you can pull this back if you need to. Get that cardboard out of there. I mean that uh, paper. Cut it off. Cut off the jacket. It's not going to look pretty, but that's okay. It works. Sometimes you don't have the money to buy these cool tools and you just do what you need to to get by. So we've got that out of the way. Now we've got these really thick wires for 12 gauge. This is definitely rigid. It doesn't bend as easily as the 14. So now you got to go in here and strip this stuff. You got to spin around. Again, you might have a 12 gauge stripper. Oh, wire goes flying across the room. And I'm going to look. I don't think you're going to be able to see it with the camera. I'm looking right now. Maybe you can. My thumbnail goes right into the gouge. It gouged the the, uh, the conductor over there. I can see there's a little indent. Not the end of the world, but it really shouldn't be that way. And then you've got this big thick wire. Now we've got to bend it if we're not going in a wire nut, if we're going around a screw of an outlet 
or a switch, you have to bend it if you're not going into the back holes over there. And so we've got these little uh, cheap, much smaller than they should be, needle nose. And you can see the amount of force I'm using to bend this thing right now. Imagine doing this on a ladder, cutting, cutting, and then bending, even if you're not on a ladder, all that time to do this. And so that's supposedly why you want to buy this item, the Klein K1412. And so we're going to test it out now and see how it works, see if it does work well. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit so we can look at this tool and see what we've got here. What we have at the very tip of this tool is a little, uh, kind of like a pliers thing. You can see those teeth on the end. That's a pliers if you need to uh, grab something. That little round section right above my nail, that is if you were going to be crimping a lug. If you know what a lug is, then that will make sense to you. It's a little round barrel. You would. Uh, Put the lug in there, maybe with your wire. Of course, you have to move this lock so the tool opens. You'd put the lug in there and you would squeeze it down into that upper hole over there. And it would make a crimp. Maybe not the greatest crimp, but it would work. Then we've got two jaws over here. We've got 14-2, which will be used for the 14-gauge Romex. We have 12-2, which will be used for the 12-gauge Romex. Now, there's a really nice video on here that gives you really bad information, so I'm going to explain why it's bad information in a minute. But what we have over here is we have uh, a screw cutter for a 632 screw and for an 832. And all you would do, I'm not going to show you, show you how to do that, uh, you would just take your screw and you would put it, I'm not sure if you can see with the video, but the top hole is threaded for the 632 and the 832. So you would take your screw and you would screw it into the hole and you would let it go all the way through the back hole. On the right side you can see or on the left side you would let it go through the back hole. And the back hole is not threaded. And then when you got it to the proper length you would, that lock just went back on again. You'd go and you'd squeeze it and it would cut the screw at the proper length and since the screw was in the threaded section it would not get damaged and the part that got broken off would have a nice smooth cut. So that's the advantage of the 632 and the 832. 832 and 632 you'll probably be using those on your outlet boxes or screw boxes. And then we have solid and stranded. There's a video on here that gives you bogus info. It says that the solid should be used in this hole for bending and the stranded should be used in this hole for bending. Both of these holes are the exact same size and I'll show you what they're for in a minute, but that is bogus info. You see the 12 and the 14 and the 14 and the 16 and you see solid and stranded. If you have solid 14 gauge wire, it goes into the top hole. Solid 12 gauge wire goes into the second hole. Stranded 16 gauge goes in the top hole. Stranded 14 gauge goes in the bottom hole. So you were given bad info if you watched that video. And then I'll explain these two holes in a minute. So I'm going to turn the camera back upside down so I can put it on a tripod and show you what this is all about. Let's start with the 14 gauge white wire first. That was difficult, but not as difficult as the 12, and I cut it off at the end. So let's see how this works. We've got the 14-2 mark over here. So I'm going to get the wire, and I'm going to take... I'm assuming this is just going to cut in. I don't know if it's supposed to go in this direction or this direction. So let's look and see. Um, I think it's supposed to be with the numbers facing to the right. Let's try it out. Let's put that in the 14-2 section. Again, I have to take off the lock, which I keep pushing on. And I'll put it down in the 14-2 spot, and I'll squeeze down. 
and then I will slide. Wow, wasn't that a lot easier than what I went through with this? So I'll slide this off. I'll slide off the paper. Nice clean cut. I can probably pull it off, but I'm going to cut it off. So we've got a nice beautiful cut with the 14-2. I have the numbers facing to the right away from me, and I pulled. Let's try that on the 12 gauge, and then we'll get back to the 14 in a minute and finish it off. So I cut off the end of the 12 gauge, the thing that I worked on a little while ago. And let's see if I have to go through the big hassle of using the cutters and taking a lot of time making it look really bad. So I'm going to put it in the slot of the 12-2, and I'm going to squeeze down. I'm just going to do a squeeze. Okay, it stopped. Now I'm going to pull and see what happens. Wow, this is really some serious wire here. But it pulled away. Now, and it's a nice clean cut around the jacket. It's a nice clean cut on the cardboard. So I'm going to get my magnifier visors on, and I'm looking at the wire. It's a tiny little nick on the ground, not much. Um, a little bit of nick on the black wire on the insulation, but it did not cut through. Maybe I squeezed too hard, but much easier than messing with this absolute nightmare. So now we've got the stripping, the 12 and the 14. And this wire is so thick. I'm going to stick with the 12. This is really thick, very difficult wire to work with. The number 12 is on the bottom hole, so I'm going to go with the bottom hole. And you saw what I went through messing with this, trying to do the stripping. So let's see what happens when I go in here. Squeeze the handle down. Numbers are still facing away from me. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. Nice and clean. I'm going to zoom in with my magnifier. Absolutely no damage to the wire at all. I'm going to go back down. Second slot, number 12. Squeeze the handle. Barely squeezing it. Pulling. Nice clean cut. Before I finish the video, if you like my videos, please do a thumbs up, a subscribe, or a like. Um, if you want to help me out financially, helping me buy some of these tools or things that I uh, spend my money on to make these videos to help everyone, feel free to ask for my PayPal. And uh, if you want to leave a donation, that would be awesome. So now we've got the 12 gauge wire falling on the floor. And let's try this with the 14. And the 14 is going to be the top hole. 14 solid, 16 stranded. So we're going to go into the top hole. I'm going to squeeze the handle. Barely squeeze it. It just it barely, not that much pressure. It stops. I had to squeeze a little bit more to make it cut through the insulation. Nice clean insulation. Um, no nicking at all. Get the 12 gauge wire that I worked on. Um, oh, let me finish off doing the black wire with the 14 gauge. I really didn't want to spend the money to buy this tool. I've done a few jobs, like I said, and I got through, and it was not easy at all. But I just decided. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of messing with all these tools to try to do this stuff. So I've got my wires stripped. And remember I told you somebody gave some bogus info about these uh, two holes for solid and stranded? Well, supposedly these tools, these holes are for looping. Okay, so these are supposed to be looping holes. And let's try it out. you got to figure out how you're going to use this for the right length. But you're supposed to be... Let's go over there, and we'll do a loop, take the tool out, and I, didn't, I haven't done this before, so I didn't know exactly where, but you've got a nice, clean, smooth loop. That you would be able to
connect, so I'm having a hard time getting this thing on there, sorry. But there you go, look at that. So you have to figure out what your length is. That's not really that bad. You, you really don't want the insulation that close to the screw, but that is a nice clean loop. Try doing that with this and you will realize it never comes out this smooth, it never comes out this even, it doesn't come out perfectly looped like it should. So, um, what do we have? So the person who said that you use the uh, one hole for stranded and the other for solid, no, they're wrong. Either hole is usable because these are strictly for loops and they have nothing to do with stranded or solid wire. That's a little better, but you, you don't, again, want the wire to be hanging over. But that's a nice loop. So what we saw in this video now is we saw that I did the cut with the 14 gauge Romex and the 12 gauge Romex. I was able to strip the ends of the wires, the 12 gauge and the 14 gauge. I was able to make a nice clean loop with these two holes. I don't know why you need me to see, show you that this is a pliers, but that's a pliers tip on the end if you need to do some bending or whatever you would need to use. And I don't have a lug with me to show you how to squeeze the handle and crimp it. And you saw, again, uh, these are the holes for cutting your screws. It's got a little latch on there to lock the tool. Um, one other thing, uh, normally you want your wires coming through the box and you want about six to eight inches. Eight inches might be a standard. Some people might want it less. Some people might want it more. But you want your wire coming from the end of the jacket coming out about six to eight inches. So how do you figure out six to eight inches? You use this tool. Because if you get out a tape measure and you measure from end to end, from end of the thing to the handle, it's eight inches. So all you would need to do is start off over here, start at the end, put your finger over at the end of the tool, that's your eight inches, go in there, grab the, uh, take the lock off, go in here, and we're going to take the 14 gauge Romex uh, cut, squeeze the handle, pull, And that's long, that is really long. But if you want to do six inches, that's up to you, eight inches. At least you've got the wire hanging out and you can cut it short. So you've got a nice uh, built-in measure and you've got the screw cutter and you've got the stripper and you've got the Romex cutter and you have your lugger, squeezer, crimper and you have your pliers tip and that is my review of the Klein 14, K1412 Romex Cutter Stripper. I hope this helped you out a lot. Believe me, if you do even one of these with all of this stuff, just one, you are going to wish that you had this tool. Even though it's not the cheapest thing, it's worth every penny. It will save you time, aggravation, stress. You will get very nice clean cuts. You'll get very smooth loops. You will get nice stripping on your conductors. And you should not have nicking. And again worth every single penny so i hope this video has helped you make sure that you watch all my other videos on the channel i've got some pretty awesome stuff on here and uh even if you don't want to leave a donation as long as this helps you that's all that really matters out here good luck